Well, Ulysses, the offseason is officially underway and moves and maneuvers are happening across baseball and in St. Petersburg. Small transactions are starting to happen. Little award season, season has begun. It's the hot stove. Let's get started right now. You are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sombrano. And we're the host of the Locked On Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making us your very first listen every day. Be sure to check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Locked On Rays. You can also find us on all the other traditional podcast platforms. Email us anytime with a mailbag question, comment, concern, hot take, LockedOnRays at gmail.com. All right. Uh, earlier this week, we had mentioned that uh, the Rays put several players, six to be exact, on waivers. Uh, outright and three of them have already been claimed your boy Jalen Beeks picked up by the Rockies your boy Christian Bethencourt picked up by the Guardians and Josh Fleming picked up by the Phillies and for the Rays it doesn't mean uh, they're leaving empty-handed they're getting a $50,000 fee uh, or payment from each of those teams for each of those players and gain much needed space on the 40 man roster. So in a way it's kind of uh, killing two birds with one stone. Meantime, the other names that we talked about earlier this week, Tristan Gray, Cole Solcer and uh, Ramel Tapia have gone unclaimed. Uh, so they will become free agents and can sign a minor league or major league deal later on at some point with the Rays or another organization. Yeah, honestly, from happy those three guys got, got a new gig, uh, got a new organization rather quickly. So they have the whole off season to do, you know, the human things that uh, we forget about baseball players that, you know, the rent, the the house, are we, you know, all of that stuff, mm -hmm. the, the accommodation. So that's, that's great that it's, you know, they have enough time to do that. The one that I'm, I mean, Happy for Josh uh, to be in a, in a winning team. That's awesome. He has a, an old buddy in, in Jose Alvarado. That's cool. Right. Um, Bethencourt with Cleveland. I think he's going to be in a very cool place for him uh, with Steven Vogt, uh, X-Ray. Never got a hit with the race, but new manager. I think that's a good place for Bethencourt to get his ground, uh, his feet set in the ground and, and, and just, you know, know that he, that organization is very much like the race. And I think that's, that's good, good, going to be good for him. The third guy. Now that's the one I'm worried about. Jalen Beeks in Colorado. Yeah. He Boy. better be throwing a lot of two seamers. He better it's, do everything in his power to keep the ball on the ground. The home run rate uh, went up. I, I it's just like, uh, I don't know, man. I, that's something I, I would not put green Skittles on yeah. on terrific numbers for Beaks in Colorado. No, that's where uh, pitchers' careers go to die, the Rocky Mountains there. Uh, speaking of pitchers, it is interesting because uh, in all the maneuvering that happened, we haven't even mentioned this yet, but Blake Hunt, friend of the program, was traded to Seattle for a guy named Tayton Levins, a Class A catcher, so a catcher-for-catcher catcher swap, uh, and then – Another move that the Rays made, uh, trading Michael Mercado to the Phillies to get Adam Leverett, a double-A uh, pitcher. So really, it's a, a case of, again, the Rays um, offing some of those Rule 5 eligible players for younger players that might foster and develop into uh, major leaguers or, or Rule 5 ads at some point. But uh, in the throes of everything that happened there, they did add Manuel Rodriguez to the 40 man who has some major league experience under his belt as a 5'11", 210 pound right-handed pitcher uh, previously with the Chicago Cubs. Um, I don't know if you've heard or, or seen or witnessed highlights of this guy, but he's got nasty, nasty stuff. Like yeah. the last time he is one of those guys where it is eye-popping in terms of the velocity 
in the movement and the slider in the break. I mean, he, he tops out at 99. His slider tops out around 90 with 40 inches of vertical break. If you Google Manuel Rodriguez or YouTube it, you'll be like, wow, I can see why this guy has, you know, 80 strikeouts in 56 innings in AAA. Now there is some, some control and strike throwing ability issues, but if the Rays can get him somewhat on the straight and narrow, um, his stuff is reminiscent of like Jose Alvarado from the right side, maybe a different profile, but in terms of the wow factor of the fact that anybody can make contact with a baseball with what this guy is throwing all out is remarkable. Like he, it, he is a legit, one of those fun to watch arms. It's a uh, pitching ninja yeah. sort of stuff. Like it's, it's fun to watch him pitch. I, I got to see a couple of videos and yeah, you're right. It, the, the stuff jumps out the page, but like you said, you know, the results haven't been, uh, haven't been as good as the stuff has. And so you expect, or you at least hope rather that when uh, he got, comes into the Rays organization, which is a pitching factory and you can kind of say, okay, this is what we can see that works. Uh, maybe scratch that pitch off, maybe move on the rubber a little bit, like just little adjustments. Try to just, we've heard time and time again, how the race preach, not only get ahead in the strike zone, just throw it, but also throw it down the middle. Let your stuff actually work. You know, let your yeah. horizontal, let your vertical breaks actually do the work for you. Don't just try to pinpoint it, just throw it in the middle and then let the stuff work out itself. So that, that would be really cool for, for that kind of arm to, to work because the, the Rays did have a dip in 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 the middle there of the season with the bullpen. They got it figured out late in the season, but you know when when you lose the division for by a couple games, by a few games, you start right. making some math and you're like, hmm, that was a lot of blown saves. So like any time that you get an arm like this with that stuff, if you can just polish it a little bit, you know th that's that's at least you know a couple less blown blown saves maybe for 2024. I can say with full confidence that he is more exciting to watch on the mound than Josh Fleming and Jalen Beeks. And quite frankly, a lot of Rays relievers and Rays pitchers for that matter. Again, if he can keep it in control in, in pace, that's a, a big if and a big question, but the, the arm talent that he has does not um, come around very often. So I'm really excited for the prospect that uh, the Rays can figure things out with him because he could, he could really, really be something. And maybe it's just uh, a situation where you try to get him comfortable, work him into a, a low level, low leverage, lowest of leverage roles, and then um, elevate his game from there. Um, so we'll see uh, what happens going forward. But uh, that's a that's a guy to uh, check out for sure. Uh, so as it stands. Um, Last I checked, anyway, uh, the roster, the 40-man roster is at 39. Uh, there's another 11 individuals up for arbitration. And then, of course, we have the uh, Rule 5 uh, ad, or you have to add the guys that you want to add uh, before the Rule 5 draft by November 14th. That is the deadline. So we can... unless the Rays plan to only add one guy, uh, they have more work to do, I should say. Yes, yeah. So they got one more week, basically, to get those little bureaucratic administrative moves done. It's I don't think it's it's going to be any major moves. It's just probably going to just be the, the sort of moves that we that we have seen so far. Um, minor moves to just kind of get some space, and and we'll see. We'll see uh, what happens, and, and obviously we'll talk about it when it happens. Certainly. All right. We have more to discuss, but first we have to tell you this score early this NFL season with FanDuel America's number one sports book right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 money line bet. That's a hundred and fifty bucks if your team wins. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action this, uh, than right this very moment. The app is super easy to use. And there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over unders, and beyond. So go ahead and do the thing. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on L O C K E D O N 
to kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, they are an official partner. They are the official partner of the NFL. So, Ulysses, as we get into uh, the offseason, as we dive into November, not only will we have trades, acquisitions, and transactions galore, uh, and I think much more exciting and noteworthy uh, tidbits to come for the Rays and across baseball as well. But it also means award season. And several Rays, as you would expect, winning 99 regular season games are up for uh, a special uh, moment or memento or two uh, in the next coming weeks. Uh, it's becoming a pretty consistent trend now that uh, your boy, Kevin Cash, is a finalist for American League Manager of the Year again and again and again. This will be the fifth time in the last six seasons that uh, he has finished in the top three in the BBWAA voting. So he will be going off and competing against Brandon Hyde and Bruce Bochy for that title. Uh, and I should note, this is uh, regular season based. Um, so oh, can, can, can we yeah. just put a parenthesis here? Oh, my bleeping God. If I see more comments on anti-social media of just casuals that think, well, the, he won the World Series. People, yeah. these votes happen before the first pitch of the playoffs. Before the first pitch of the playoffs, these votes were cast. Yeah, That's it. Like, for everything. For Gold Gloves, for MVP, for Cy Young, for Manager of the Year, for anything and everything. Before the first pitch was right. thrown, these were already in the ballots. So I just I just hate that every year we see people say the same thing. Well, in the play, no. So I just needed to do yeah. that parentheses for my mental health. And I know that I'm not the only one that's probably dying at those comments. So having said all that, Ulysses, am I correct in assuming that you believe that the manager of the year won't be Bruce Bochy and won't be Kevin Cash, but will be Brandon Hyde having won 101 games in the regular season and leading, guiding the Orioles to their first playoff berth since 2016 with a roster of young guns and dudes wet behind the ears. Yeah, it has to be. It has to be. And I know that people are, oh, well, but that, you know, the rookies were amazing. They had like three number one picks. Like they're still rookies. young rookies. Yeah, there's still young people, and like I know Adley Rutschman is fantastic. It's his second, it's his first full season, by the way. <laughs> like mm -hmm. you can't just be like, oh, he's a veteran, like he's a goat. No, you don't know what Adley Rutschman is going to be. Like it's a, he's supposed to be really good, but again, such a young, such a young, young squad, and having turned around that that franchise. I mean, look, you have to give it to Hyde and. The, the fight was between Kevin Cash and Hyde. I mean, what Bochi did was awesome. But, I mean, when it, it, it was between Hyde and Cash. The thing that basically puts Hyde over uh, Cash was the you, you had that four-game series in Baltimore. You win the first two games. You're feeling good. You're, you're able to tie first place and then... The cookie crumbles, you know, it's like when you're having, you know, cookies and yeah. milk and then the that boom, it stays in the milk. That's exactly what happened. You lose the last two, one by walk off, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, and yeah, that gave Hyde basically the the award. That that was it. That was the, the final seal of approval. Like, OK, Hyde gets it if he gets the division. He got the the split in that four game, the four game series and yeah. boom, he, he gets it. Um, and again, no disrespect to Bruce Bochy, now a four-time World Series champion as a manager and a five-time pennant winner, which as an aside, him coming off the uh, retirement recliner or couch or wheelchair, whichever it may be, at uh, 68 years old, uh, do you think Joe Madden ever gets another managerial shot in the big leagues? Now, 100%. You've got Snitker in 21 you got Baker in 22. You've got Bochy in 23. Everything is trend. Everything is yeah. trends. 
fashion, sports, economics, politics. And when it goes really high one way, it's going to come down. Look at basketball shorts. Parentheses. Ah, yeah. Basketball, basketball shorts in the 70s, 80s, real short. Those puppies, you were showing a lot of leg. Then in the 2000s, Allen Iverson time, boom, so long, past the knees. Now yeah. look at basketball shorts. They're up again. Everything is all trends. So right now, I think you're going to see a little bit of movement towards old managers rather than like, you know, the, the young up and coming guys. Yeah, it really is interesting. And it would be, I'd be curious to see what Joe Madden uh, could do again, giving him another shot. Sometimes that's all it takes is one of the older dudes coming in or multiple older dudes coming in and having success and uh, taking it from there. It's uh, you know, a reboot of the golden girls or something like that. But um, yeah, so we'll have to wait and see on that one. But uh, yeah, the, the other thing about Brandon Hyde, again, not just winning 101 games, but in the AL East and having a bunch of rookies lead the way in the AL East. This isn't the NL Central or the AL Central. That's a lot of pressure. That's yeah. a lot of tough environments. That's a lot of legacies that you have to try to tower down uh, between the Red Sox, the Yankees, and not to mention uh, the Blue Jays and the Rays who have certainly established themselves over the last several years. So uh, that's one thing. I'm also with you on the uh, Brandon Hyde love for this year. Uh, now, as far as other awards that uh, the Rays could cash in on, uh, believe it or not, the Silver Slugger Award is up for grabs. The Rays have three potential winners uh, with Randy Rosarena. Yandy Diaz and Isak Paredes. And I'm actually really bullish on the fact or the idea that the Rays could have two silver slugger winners. I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I think Paredes is the sexy pick that a lot of people want to like feel smart. Like, no, I actually look at Paredes. Um, if the voters want to be that way, I think he, he's, he's got everything that you'd want from a third baseman. And on the other side, you have Yandy Diaz, who got a little bit of name recognition this year with the whole mm -hmm. all-star selection. He was the starter for the AL, had a home run, wins the batting title. Like, this is the most vibes Yandy Diaz has had to his name. And the numbers were impressive. So there wasn't a lot of other competition, really, uh, in, in first base. I mean, the lack of it. So... I think Yanni Diaz could also have a an opportunity here for the Silver Slugger. Uh, I agree with you. But, Kevin, if you think you only have to pick one that has the better chance, who has the better chance of winning, Isak Paredes or Yandy Diaz? Oh, that's tough. Yeah, I'm going to take Randy out of the equation because you're competing with a lot of yeah. big-name outfielders that – have a lot of power, legit sluggers to their name. I mean, we can go down the list between Judge, Robert, uh, Adolis, uh, Julio Rodriguez, Kyle Tucker, Anthony Santander. There's other guys on the list as well. Yeah. Oh, that is difficult. I, I'm i almost leaning as great as Yandy Diaz has been this past season, and I do think I am actually really confident that the Rays will have two silver slugger winners. If I could only pick one, I mm -hmm. would be more inclined to lean toward Isak Paredes because of the utility hmm. category. Not necessarily the third base category, probably not the third base category, but the utility category where he had to play at least 20 games at two different positions, which he did, and yeah. a over, 100 overall. In that role, he's facing off against Gunnar Henderson and Whit Mirrorfield. And if we line up the stats one by one by one, Paredes should win that thing pretty handily. Okay. Okay. I like that argument on the utility. I really like that. Yeah. yeah. And and I mean, with Merrifield, my goodness, uh, that's just if yeah, the competition is yeah thin. And you could almost uh, argue, I mean, the competition is kind of thin at first base, believe it or not. Because the yeah, that was my argument. Corgelson, eight low. I mean, you're you're even um, you're even uh, more close to it with with the utility competition like i thought the first base competition was thin but you're right the the utility one is way worse it's way yeah. easier for paredes to to win this but yeah it, it it should be fun man i think it'll be a letdown if none of them win again i am i am with you randy rosarena you can basically just take him out um right. from from that running it's nice that he gets the nomination of course uh but 
I think it's it's Paredes or Diaz. And I'm going to go with Diaz just because of the name recognition for the BBWA writers. But I like your utility competition, lack of competition argument. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. And then final thing on the awards front. Now, um, we're a little bit late to the game here, but the Gold Glove winners have been announced for both the American League and the National League. Uh, the Rays, uh, surprise, surprise, did not have a winner this year. I'll just run through uh, the victors in the American League. Jose Barrios at pitcher, Jonah Heim at catcher, Nate Lowe at first base, Andres Jimenez at second, Matt Chapman at third, Anthony Volpe at short, Stephen Kwan at left, Kevin Kiermeyer, never heard of him, at center, Adolis Garcia at right field, and uh, Mauricio Dubon at utility uh that was the opportunity for the rays to get a winner there of course taylor walls uh, struck out in that regard um so i guess my question to you ulysses is who will be the next Rays player to win a gold glove will it be taylor walls or somebody else it's not going to be taylor walls okay so you don't think in 2024, 2025, um, he would win it in the utility category. If Taylor Walsh is putting in that many at bats or that many games to be considered into the, into the gold glove nomination, we haven't fixed our issues. Let's see how many games did Taylor Walls play this past season. I'm just doing a quick search through here. He played in, he only had 303 at bats in the regular season played 99 games. So, so it's not like you have, to, I mean, I don't know necessarily what the requirements, I'm sure there are some requirements to be eligible for the gold glove, but it's right. not like you have to, you know, have 500 plate appearances and play 140 games. So played under a hundred games and he was still eligible for consideration. 62% of the games. Okay. 62% of, of the games. Game. So I would rather not see Taylor Walls okay. play 62% of the game. So maybe if the cutoff is 60%, maybe 50%. Although, didn't Rafael Palmeiro win the gold glove at first base and he only played like 30 games or something like that? Yeah, there's some shenanigans that have happened or, or yeah. gone on previously for sure. Yeah. No, uh, but I like your question. Who is going to be the next gold glover? I'm going to go with a cheeky answer um, because it's a cheeky question. Mm -hmm. Carson Williams. Okay. I that's actually who I thought you were going to guess when you mentioned cheeky. So oh, okay. I dig it. How about this? Let me let me rephrase the question <laughs> into the parameters that I want you to answer the question uh -huh. in. Who on the Rays 40 man roster presently uh will win a gold glove? Or will there not be one? Honestly, nobody really. I mean, Siri has a shot, but I think he just he needs a little bit of more maturing to do. And I know some people are going to take that the wrong way, but um, yeah. he, I think he, it's awesome he hot dogs it a little bit too much. It's it's. I think it's awesome that he has fun, and that is exactly what we want the game to be fun to attract young audience. Like that is that is awesome. But don't sacrifice making the play in order to make it look like you're having fun. Like, make the play should be the number one. Yeah. The being cool and looking awesome and having swag, that's all fine and dandy as long as you make the play. Do not sacrifice making the play in order to look good, to, you know, yeah. to, to, to have that. So I think that's my issue the most. Like, Kiermaier was not like that. He he is definitely a ham. Don't get right. me wrong. Kevin Kiermaier is the Ray that loves the camera more than anybody who has ever been in front of a camera. But he would do it after the play concluded, not mid-play. Exactly. Or if he did like a little jump, those little jumps that, that, right. that he didn't need to make, it's because he knew that he was going to get the ball. I, I never saw him... Like trying like to like, you know, hot dog it or like, you know, oh, I'm going to make it even more difficult and then miss the play. If you try to make it a little bit more difficult, he still made the play. Um, I think so. So I, I do. I think Siri's a great center fielder and he has the ability to win a gold glove for sure. 
I just think he needs a little bit maturing, which is fine and dandy because he's what, 24, 25? Like, there's still time for him maturing. Yeah. And 75%, I'm glad you brought that up because 75% of the selection process for Gold Glove is major league managers and coaches voting within their own league. So when you kind of show off and show up in a way the other team they're not going to vote for you when it comes to award season, when it comes to these types of things, because you still have a lot of old head managers and really just anybody in general, you know, whether you're a, a generation Z millennial or boomer manager, uh, you don't want to be shown up, you know, one of, but you have to be like industry wide. You have to look, I'll give you guys a story. If you don't know this one, it's one of, is one of my favorite Joe Girard, Girardi stories. Um, who I saw at a USF game. Um, Recently? Uh, yeah, last year. I, th- I thought I told you this. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I totally a football did. game? A baseball game? Baseball game, yeah. He okay. was there watching his kid. So, like, I, I watched the okay. one inning with him. He was cool. He was awesome. Um, nice. Anyway, he once said in an interview that when they're playing BP, they would play their Kiermaier game. And the Kiermaier game was... When a ball gets hit, they would say, would Kiermaier catch that? Mm. That's how big Kiermaier was at his time. And that was like seven, eight years ago. How much How much time has Boone been the manager? This is like 2018. So Too we're talking long. like before 2018. So we're, I mean, that long ago. And Kevin Kiermaier still has the pedigree that he da- has and, and gets a gold glove. Very cool for KK. Yeah. Awesome for him, but that's how big you have to be. That's how recognized you have to be that the Yankees are playing the Kiermaier game. Yeah. At least to win, maybe not just one, but four of those jokers. Um, so I I'm just looking for one among this Rays group going <laughs> forward. So right. uh we'll see. But yeah, that that is a uh, fun recall story on Kiermaier. And who knows? Um uh based on the season that he had. He's got some more left in the tank, and he could very well win his fifth gold glove, which would be awesome for him, for sure. And he could very well find himself as one of the outfielders that the Yankees call upon and wear that Uh, pinstripe and then would have to participate in No Shave November like I am, except every day for Kiermaier. No more beard. Or they might um, give him... uh... A reprieve because uh of the eyes too good looking you're too good looking. you you pass the the no shave test or whatever i don't know indiana uh, bump you have you're go. just too good like we need you in posters hey look he, your best he needs to play in uh the midwest before he ends his career play in chicago play alongside uh or play in the same organization that your brother works for uh yeah. with the cubbies that'd be a cool story that'd be sure. cool All right. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe and we will talk to you tomorrow.